This is the aerodynamics of the convertible version of the Koenigsegg CCX. Last week, we did the regular version, but without a roof, everything changes. And if you're going to get a Seg, then you should get a convertible so everyone can see how happy you are. How does the missing roof affect the aerodynamics? Let's find out. For the passengers, we used two watermelons. Like the regular CCX, the front obviously decelerates the flow a lot, which converts much of the air's dynamic pressure into static pressure and hence increases the drag. But because the front is so small, it isn't as bad as most other cars. The front little splitter is still doing a great job as well. We have quite a challenging flow hitting it because it is so angled, but the splitter handles it like a champ. And the underbody is performing very similarly to last week's roofed seg, so we can kind of conclude that the convertible version isn't affecting the underneath of the seg very much. That's great news because the seg performs very well here. But what about the rest of the car? Well, getting to the front windshield and approaching the convertible section, everything changes. This flow is 20 meters per second, so a fast cruise around town. But even at this speed, the angle of the front windshield makes the flow continue to follow the same angle even when it passes the windshield. It takes about a third of the distance down the cabin before the flow finally curves and becomes more lateral. That is incredible because this flow that hits the windshield is now just in free space and resists the rest of the flow trying to push it down for so long. There is a positive and a negative to this. The positive is that the watermelons inside are protected from much of the external stuff in the air, whether that is dirt or rain. In fact, there's a good chance that if it were to rain, the water would just get carried away on this zephyr and the watermelons would remain dry. Or let's say you're behind a truck or something throwing out a lot of pollution. Well, instead of getting a lungful of it, most of the pollution will be directed away into the guy on the motorbike behind you. So from a driving point of view, it makes things much more comfortable. The negative is that we now have a bigger wake because you can see the flow that comes from the windshield is much slower. And because this happens so far upstream on the car, it means so much more of the car will be subjected to this now much lower energy flow. For the roof to CCX, the roof was awesome because it not only looked great, it was also very aerodynamic with almost nothing to be sad about. But for this convertible version, there is a noticeable wake from the rest of the car. I mean, just look at this really slow blue flow just behind their cabin. That makes things challenging for the rear wing because now it has so much dirty flow to handle and this rear wing doesn't have any little tricks to deal with bad flow. Naturally, we see that the wing doesn't kick up the flow as much, unlike what we saw with the roofed version, and that is a dead giveaway that it isn't producing as much downforce. Now the rear wake, I'm pretty impressed with actually because we do get a big wake from the convertible section, but it doesn't make the rear wake too much worse. And it is actually quite comparable to the roofed seg. And just quickly, I noticed that looking at the rear of the cabin, the flow slams into it, decelerates and circulates around. That isn't good. If Koenigsegg was willing to compromise on the CCX's looks, they could have made the rear section rounder or brought it down more so the flow jumps over it a little more. That would have reduced the drag. Looking at the pressure, I don't want to cover the underbody too much because it is very similar to the roofed seg as we have already covered in the last video. But looking at the front windshield, we have lower pressure on the top half of it than the roofed seg, which means more lift, unfortunately. The reason why is because this windshield is sloped at about 45 degrees. So decomposing the resulting force vector, both the lift and the drag get affected by the pressure on this windshield. If the windshield was more sloped, then the lift would be further affected. And if the windshield was more upright, then the drag would be more affected. But either way, the lack of roof is affecting the upstream flow significantly, and unfortunately in a negative way. Over the cabin, we get not only very low pressure, which is terrible for downforce, and that means a lot more lift is produced, but there is also a pressure gradient going from in the cabin to our side. That means the watermelons would experience a slight draft inside. On a nice warm sunny day, that's fine. On a nippy day, not so much. What's more, this low pressure extends over the entire roof section. On the other hand, the roofed seg saw most of the low pressure at the front, but not too much at the back of the roof, relatively speaking. I'm really impressed by the rear wing though because despite all that is thrown at it, there is still some downforce being produced. We can see a little bit of high pressure on top and low pressure underneath. Now this difference in pressure isn't nearly as much as the roofed seg, but it's still better than a poke in the eye. Looking from on top, the flow just ahead of the wing is definitely more chaotic without the roof than with the roof as expected. And in the cabin, we see just how much the air swells around. The watermelons definitely have a draft in there, but even without the roof, the wake at this height off the ground is still being pulled in around the sides and is smaller than it should be because of clever aero, which reduces drag. These are pressure isosurfaces, which show us regions of high pressure and regions of low pressure, which I think is pretty cool. The wheels are encapsulated in low pressure, and the very large region of low pressure over the cabin is arguably the main reason why this car doesn't produce downforce, but actually lift. 
In fact, its lift coefficient is 0.07, which at 250 kbh, that will produce about 200 kilos of lift. The front is the only region of very high pressure. Interestingly, the mirrors cause a big enough wake to have considerable low pressure, and that is a source of drag, albeit a small one, luckily. Looking at these vortices, I have to say that the roof is impacting the wing in an even worse way than we first saw. Look at these large vortices of the windshield and the rear, they then flow perfectly into the rear wing. The rear wheels produce just as large vortices as the front, and that is a little surprising because often the rear wheels of supercars are more shielded than the front, and they usually see slower moving flow. These streamlines show that even though we saw in a few earlier videos that there is definitely flow in the cabin, the flow is not coming from upstream because you can see these streamlines just shoot over the roof and continue downstream. And that is what I was talking about earlier where if you have rain for example, it will just get whisked away by the air and the watermelons won't get wet. These front streamlines then dive down quite nicely and join the rest of the wake about half a car length downstream. What that means is that the wake is smaller because the flow over the top is being controlled a little more and that also comes with a reduced drag too. And speaking of drag, we have the drag isosurfaces here and much of it is the same as when the car has a roof but the cabin is definitely different. I mean, just the entire cabin is engulfed with drag. The watermelons are swimming in drag. The wing is pretty good though. So while it does lose some downforce, it doesn't come at the expense of higher drag. The drag coefficient is 0.36, which is obviously much worse, but still decent for a supercar and with a convertible, everyone can see your smiling face. Peace and amigos.